Hey everybody, I wanted to talk a little bit about the balance changes for you guys. So, I think that CD Projekt Red needs to make like two things really clear. One, I think they need to be more clear about how many cards they want every archetype to have. I think a reasonable uh, amount each archetype should have. If it's a primary archetype like Reveal or Dwarves, it should have somewhere between um, 12 and 17 cards that are like in the, the center of the core of your deck and it there should be secondary archetypes those that kind of supplement these primary archetypes these things like ambush hand buffing self wounding should be somewhere around seven to ten cards in your deck finally there should be spaces for tech Cards, and those should represent somewhere between one and five cards in your deck. The second goal I want CD Projekt Red to focus on is having clear idea of how powerful different cards at different tiers should be. I think bronze cards should be somewhere balanced around 10 to 12 strength as they're, as they're mean. So if you play, this means that if you play a bunch of spotters and vanguards, those are the upper strength cards. You have to play cards that are below the main alchemist cards that mulligan cards from your hand stuff like that which are going to be below the 10 strength 10 12 strength by a few points and basically adding that strength to your cards in the later round you sacrifice tempo in one round to give strength to another round axman represented a very bad problem for this uh, scenario because they were they were very low risk cards because Skellige is a low-risk faction. You can revive cards if your opponent removes it. You can play Shackles or you can play Donner to remove Locking. The Weather cards, if your opponent removes the Weather, at least you got points for damaging their units and for the buffs that go to the Axemen. Axemen was getting more than 20 points. If you look at the Spotters and the Vanguards, those cards were getting at most somewhere around 15 to 17 points if you're really forcing the synergy. And that's... If those cards are supposed to be big and Axemen is getting bigger than they are easily, then there is a problem with the balance. Now, I'm not sure if I'm happy with what happened to Weather, but I'm going to say, let's wait to see what happens see if weather is actually dead <laughs> or whether or not it becomes more niche which brings us back to my original goal which was let's mix and match if weather becomes a supplement a secondary thing in your deck i think that's good i don't think weather should necessarily be a primary aspect of your deck or if unless it's monster in which case it's fine because they have a lot of cards that supplement weather playing i think that one of the benefits of having the weather nerf like this is not the beginning players, but really it allows for more variability. You have to make sacrifices to play weather. Weather is more risky. Clearing weather is not so necessary. Not everybody's forced to play three weather clears in their deck. However, if, no, if you play against a deck that doesn't have any weather clears, then your weather is more effective. There's a risk-reward associated with it. Now, of course, weather is probably never going to get as much value as a bronze unit. You would have to play five rounds for impenetrable fog to hit enough units to be 10 strength. But you can also use uh, torrential rain and other things and biting frost as removal. And that could have some value. Because certain times you need to remove a small card because it has an important effect. Another aspect of mixing and matching that I have issue with in the current patch is that there's a lot of revive cards, and I don't think revive cards should be focused on overtune cards. They should be focused on cards that benefit from being revived, like they get extra base strength or they revive other cards from your deck. They shouldn't be used to put a bunch of reaver hunters back into your deck, or they shouldn't be used because the reaver hunters, when open beta released, were just overtuned. So playing them twice was actually highlighting the fact that they were so overtuned. Uh, I think that we should just have brave cards. Like it, Northern Realms should have a faction of 
like an archetype of brave cards so that when you revive them you get to have their brave effect twice kind of like if you play Geralt and you get him up to 13 strength and then the next round you renew him and you get the brave effect off again he'll go up to 16 strength which I think is fair uh, and I think that's where revive should go um, as opposed to Oh, you have this overtuned card. I'm just going to revive it and get that card twice. A Skeletor player was basically having access to six Axemen. You should, uh, like, the Priestess of Freya shouldn't be used just to revive Axemen. It shouldn't be a way of countering removal. It should be a way of getting these cards that get some kind of benefit from being revived. That's my thought. Looking at other things, I think Nithral is kind of useless now. Like, if the upper echelon of Silvers is 15 strength, getting 15 points off your Nithral is way too hard. Um, other than that, I think Combi's a good change. I don't... A Combi should be niche. And it shouldn't be like, oh, I have three shackles in my hand. What's the point? How is my opponent ever going to deal with this kind of situation? You should have reasonable amount of time to be able to deal with it. The succubus change, I think, is also reasonable because, like, succubus was much stronger than Geralt Igni, and I think that having this two, having it end on the end of your turn, kind of like cow carcass was changed. Uh, I think that's fair. I think that's how the game should work. Uh, it's not the end of the world. You can disagree with my opinions. But remember, my main point of this video is to say that we should be able to mix and match stuff. Kind of like in a shooter. You have like a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, and a melee. You should have a primary archetype, a supplementary archetype, and you should have some tech cards. Everybody, and there should be decisions made at all levels that allow us to have variability and a way to surprise our opponent. And I want to see expansions do that. And the second thing I want you guys to look at is the tier strength of every card. If you got that, that's the main thing. My opinions on what a certain card should be strength at is not as important as those two things. Tell me what you think in the comments. Thank you.